I want to start with the Ripperverse, and uh, this is an incredible story. Take yeah. me back to the very beginning of it, though, because uh, people may have heard some of the later developments. Yeah. How did this start? Where did you come up with the idea? What inspired it? Yeah, so I'm a comic book lifer. I mean, this is something that was on my thing to do, bucket list, if you will. Sure. But I think, and I, man, it won't be until I'm like in my 40s before I can ever afford to do something like that. And just having the amount of growth that we've had over the you know last five, six years, it just accelerated the thing. And seeing comic books go in the direction that they're going, which is in the tank, uh, <laughs> I figured, hey man, I, I talk about this stuff every day on my channel, why don't I be a part of the uh, solution? It's the good time to now do it. So about a year, a little over a year and a half ago, around a year and a half ago, I officially announced because I wanted my my audience to hold me to it, like, I'm going to do it. I'm, really? This is going to yeah. be a thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, I hate doing that because the yeah. audience does hold you yeah, to exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I did it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to announce it. And then I have to yeah. I have to show up. Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I did. And, you know, uh, was that the 11th or so? We kind of announced the campaign of, uh, of uh, last month, July, ironically. And man, I did not expect I'd be lying to you if I told you, yeah, $3.3 million we're going to do. <laughs> no, there's no way I thought that we were going to do that much that fast. But it goes to show how just hungry people were for this. Yeah, because I think your initial goal was $100,000, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and, sort of, and this is sort of like a pre sale type of thing? Basically? Yeah, pre sale, yeah. yeah. It was a pre order. I just made, uh, I wanted the transparency. You see, like with crowdfunds, they have all like the transparency. Hey, who bought? I wanted to take that, but just do a pre order. So I already had the product. Um, like the actual book was done. We were just waiting for printing uh, yeah. and, and stuff like that. And yeah, I was just, just wanted to do a, a, a pre order, and I was like, 100000 I wouldn't break even with that, but I would think that would be like a n nice little launching pad. Yeah, exactly. With that, I was like, yeah, and I was less at the bar a little too low on me. I guess yeah. so. So now you point out you're over three million dollars yeah. in, in, in sales so far, which is incredible. I mean, I, I can't tell you how happy I am for you because you're, you're such that. a great dude, and, and I, I love having you here, and I love you coming on, and you, you have a great message, which is personal empowerment, right? Yes. You know, um, but that's it's not. It's not a political comic book, right? right? No. It's kind of the opposite of that. Like, everyone now is going woke. They're putting their politics in thing. Everyone has to make a point with everything that they do. You decided to go kind of the old school way. Yeah, I just wanted to give people good uh, entertainment. I think people that go to those sorts of mediums are all definitely in the age of connectivity. You probably get enough of that, right? You get enough politics everywhere. I mean, we talk about it every day. This yeah. is our jobs. So I wanted to give people something that they could kind of just... Uh, you know, read and adopt and, and it'd be all good. And yeah, they might know where I'm at, but I don't think people are wanting to read stories that are just so directly reflective of real world politics um, and stuff. These are universal truths. Uh, these are things that anybody should be able to acknowledge. And I think the trade, I'm not going to even call it a trade off. I guess the good part of it is if you are going to play on the politics is that at least they know the creator doesn't hate them. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like so many kind of like yeah. feel a little dirty, like consuming a Disney product now because you're like, Man, I know those guys that create that probably just hate my guts. Hate your guts. Whereas to now, you know, though I'm not making political comic books, I'm not interested in doing that. Uh, they at least know that the creator isn't someone that despises them. I don't care where they're at. I have them as a customer, and I thank them for my thank them for uh, their support. Yeah, it's it's really a fantastic idea, and I think you you really hit a great point when you're talking about. You know, I, I mean, look, I, I do a show every day. Mm -hmm. you, you're you're doing a show every day. We're doing a lot of political talk. I'm constantly just bitching about stuff, yep. right? Like yep. I am always just complaining about how the world should be. And there's something to that. You got to have that. Yeah. But like you really took that step to say, I'm going to just be part of the solution. I'm going to put it out there. And if people want it, they can they can, they can, can participate. Yep. Didn't uh, even with all the promotional items, all of that stuff, trailers, I just like, hey, I'm just going to tell these guys what my company's about. I'm going to tell them, uh, I'm going to give them a story and hopefully they're interested in some of these characters that we're going to initially introduce. And just so to, to have as many people that got behind it from uh, different walks of life was was a very, very cool kind of scenario. But I hope people, if nothing else, take from this, learn from it, and maybe they can implement something like that hmm. in their own kind of uh, thing. I think the entire entertainment industry is archaic right now. I think it's operating on an archaic model. And I think that there needs to be, I talk about the parallel economy all the time. I think that's such a necessary thing. But in the age of connectivity, it's, it's so... Uh, it's not easy, but it's way mo far more doable than it, what it was before, where you can do your own thing, have your own vision, and make that thing uh, come to life without having to have s 
everybody in the middle of kind of uh, of that project. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm hoping happens out of that. I see a lot of folks that have been inspired because of that. And that's perhaps maybe the coolest part of it all that folks are, you know, yes, I love the fact that people are like happy about comics again. Uh, yeah. uh, like we kind of, we kind of lost that, but also that people are drawing some inspiration from it. Is there, is there a bit of, in the entertainment world, a bit of like legacy protectionism going on? Where, like, I was, I was reading a, a piece uh, recently that was talking about how, is old music killing new music? Mm. And the idea was that these big record companies that have been around forever are now spending tons and tons of money, but they're spending it on old back catalogs, right? Mm. Catalogs of people who have been retired and not even making new music for years and years and years. They're not developing new stars unless it's like, you know, there's dumping money into Beyonce, right? Yeah. Like, they're really, like, going this way of, of taking these because they're realizing streaming. They're looking at yep. the numbers. They're yep. seeing people listening to more and more older music as a percentage of total listens. So, like, it seems like what they're doing is sort of building the walls around the castle a little bit and just hoping that the new creators either identify themselves and they can buy them up quickly uh, or they just can never really make a dent into their existing business. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, I call them the old guard all the time. Like, they have their way of doing things. And that's why I know so many people that were kind of new to it, they were like, what is the controversy here? Like, this guy just started a comic book because you can imagine people that just heard about it, they saw it yeah. on whatever platform, and then they see, like, this controversy that's surrounding <laughs> it where you got all these weirdos who are, like, hating it, and you, after watching, like, the trailers, you'd be like, what is the controversy? There is none. The, the problem here, though, is is that they look at it like it's a threat to that old model, mm. right? That old guard where you look at the people that have been doing things in the industry the way that they do. There's so many parallels. You bring up music and it's perfect because you know, I exist, obviously, in that industry as well. And there's so many parallels to what I had to deal with in the music space where people are just going through the motions and doing stuff. And I'm like the only one that's like, why? <laughs> like, I, okay, I get that we do it. I get that that's the industry standard. But why is everybody doing that? Mm -hmm. That was the question that I asked with my old, with my band, my current band. And that was the question that I asked here. It's like, I see everybody doing it their way. Like, why is there only one company like Diamond? I know that recently changed because of the pandemic. But like Diamond, like basically running the distribution market. Like everybody goes through them. I'm like, why? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I get that everybody's doing it. But why are, why? It's like, I think, no, we can do it a different way. So I just bothered to ask the question and give it a shot. I was like, okay, I think that we can do it in a different way. And we need to catch up with, like, the technology, catch up with the times. And uh, I think as more people realize that, you're going to see a lot more folks uh, kind of breaking out and not having to go through those old guys. And that's what they're, that's what they're afraid of. Yeah, that, they're definitely afraid of that. Uh, before we move on to some of the news of the day, I, can you give you a little bit just about what the, what's the story? We, we talked about it conceptually, but what's yeah. the actual story? So uh, the story, first book that you guys can get, I saw issue number one, is about a, a, a character by the name of Avery Silman. And what he does, he's a common rancher right now. He used to be a hero. Uh, of sorts back in the day, but there was this event that made him want to kind of hang up, it, hang up its suit. Well, he gets a call from his sister, and uh, they had this like family friend that was interning at her business called Projexus, and she comes up missing. And Altona, which is the sister's name, asks I Sum, uh, hey, can you go check this out? Last I heard, she was hanging with one of your old friends hmm. uh, by the name of Darren Fontano. So she go, or he, or rather, she asked him he says okay whatever and that's what the whole book kind of is about mm. he goes back into the city that he doesn't like really being in he stays right outside of it to go visit his old friend and basically ends up having the longest day of his life he <laughs> runs into <laughs> all these other people huh. and uh it, you got you guys will see kind of the different branching points that we have and other characters that we'll be able to develop oh very very cool and where do people go to, to get it ripperverse.com mm -hmm. you can get it you can support the campaign there's still over 40 days uh certainly left that you can get in on some of those pre-order uh, items and uh, yeah some of those are pre-order item exclusive so once they once that 45 days or so that we have left on the campaign is up they're gone they're gone forever yep. all right so